Welcome to this video where I will be documenting what I've been up to the past week and oh my goodness it's been busy so thank you very much for joining me. Orchid chore diary <laughs> of a week or maybe 10 days that was a little bit all over the place but we got a few things done but the work never stops so <laughs> Today, what we need to tackle is, first of all, we need to hose down the patio, sweeping in some areas just to save on water in some parts. First a little sweep and then rinse off with a good dose of water. At least I don't have to be chasing leaves everywhere. Another thing on my plan for today is to bring the Top Gun orchids outside. They have been living on the floor throughout the winter and they have to go to the bottom of the shelf of the Blooming Alley, which also needs a little bit of rearranging. Then, <laughs> while we're at it, we might as well rearrange the rack that stays in the grow space. We have to dust the shelves, put the orchids back in the place, those that live indoors permanently, clean the floor, remove the dust and, well, natural fertilizer from the birds that come in to visit Ciliano and sometimes they actually spend the night. We also have to rearrange the blooming alley based on which orchids need bright shade and those that get filtered sun. I will also bring some of the ridiculous lalias from their table against the hedge into the blooming alley because I'm wary of some of them getting too red and others that are staying a little wet too long. Airflow is good up against the hedge, I have plenty of it, but so is humidity, which at nighttime can be quite high. Surprise, surprise, considering I always moan about the lack of humidity. Something else that gets to go outside today are the reed stem epidendrums. Woohoo! Our night temperatures are a 17 degrees Celsius consistently and climbing steadily bit by bit so the epidendrums can come outside. And don't hate me, but big, big thing to do today is I found inserts for the bowl of the Thompsoniana and for the Tibicinus, which has blown out of its pot again. So I have to address those and I want that Thompsoniana out of that ridiculously sized pot because that set is actually dedicated for my Pandorata and I could not find the right size again. That will be addressed today because I'm tired of Tibicinus not steady in the pot. So if we get all of this done as per the plan, <laughs> it's not going to leave us time to hang the Tolumnias in their west trellis location or bring out the Angracums, which would officially signal the opening of the deep south area of my patio. So it turns out, just as I was getting ready for this project, I have a bowl here that is much, much smaller than the two that I bought for my Myrmecophilas. Never mind, I went back <laughs> to the garden center hoping to find an insert for this small bowl, but they didn't have it. So <laughs> for once and for all, Myrmecophilas are going in a setup that they can stay in. I know I said this before, but here we are. What I'm going to do also with my Tibicinus is do a bonsai kind of style. I am going to wire that orchid in. No more of this fandangle possibly blowing out. Ah, this poor orchid has been through enough. So let me just make sure that I have enough wire. And I'm going to do the same with my Thompsoniana both in a bowl and then with Lekka and I'm going to wire them in. <laughs> 
So just checking the size here, the length. A ver. You are going in here like that. And I'm going to double up on that and get all the wires cut so that I don't get, you know, funky lengths too much. Don't like to waste my supplies here. Oh boy, but so far I'm sticking to my schedule. The visit to the garden center was not the plan. So I'm a little bit behind, but I want to take my time, not start to rush. Things have been going really well so far. Thank goodness it is this time of year. I've got a little bit more daylight to work with. Okay, so this is the first one. We'll take care of the tibicinas first. Just want to show you why I'm not using microfiber. The bowl rests beautifully into the outer mask and there is a gap in between. I don't need microfiber because I can put the water level all the way up and the leka will do the rest and do the wicking for me. So I don't need microfiber in here. What I do need is my orchid. Poor thing. We'll put that over here and we will pour the leka in and then we'll see where we're at because this bowl is much bigger. And of course, I did crock the bottom with dirty leka and now that leka is on top. Well, seeing as I'm a little bit behind in my schedule, hmm. I'm going to leave this, sort this one out. I'm going to work with my orchid, leave the dirty leka as is, not mess with that. But I'm going to top up with fresh leka. Poor thing. The fact that she's still around is a surprise and credit to this orchid. Because she could be definitely on the way out, considering everything that she's been through and she's falling apart in the middle, but I'm going to keep her together. So I've got two opposing ends of wire. And I'm not going to tie her super, super firm. It's just to avoid her from blowing out. Far too much interference for this orchid in the last three, four years that I've had her. It's just, ugh. I keep setting her back. She tries, <laughs> and then there's me. There we go. That's one. Now for the Thomsoniana. No surprises there then that she's not even rooted in. Let's put her into her own water for the meantime. Now I just have a decision to make if I want that support in there. And I've decided against it. Nope, no support. Oh, we need to make a new label. Well, that's not too bad. Four years later. Let's get some leka in here. There we go. Let's check with our orchid. Where are you at? Yeah, that works for me. And I hope in future it will work for this orchid as well. That root wasn't even alive anymore. We'll leave it for now, get you nice and centered. All right, there's a root tip at the far end. Focus, Nina. We'll tie her down at one end and not try to mess around, bang in the middle of all those pseudobulbs there. Avoiding any kind of additional damage. Yeah, she feels great. Now, we'll take this and tie her up to the back, seeing as this is the back of her 
and she's moving basically in that direction. So we'll just scoot her back a little bit more and tie her off. The last time I worked with wire and orchids in a pot was <laughs> in clay pots. This brings back memories. There we go. And that would be that. Oh, the proportions. I so much prefer this. This was worth the headache, at least for me. I hope it was worth the headache for the orchid as well. Because quite honestly, poor things, my Myrmacophilos don't stand a chance in the past. But I'm hoping that now they will. That's one filled up and we're going to use the lecker that I have here for this one. I know it would appear as though I'm sharing like media and water and all that and you could say so but this orchid here the Tonsoniana was not even settled in this pot so the roots never really touched. The flushing we can say I possibly am distributing some kind of fungus Oh, in the past four years that I've had these orchids, I have not seen any kind of issues with them that would warrant me to have any kind of concern in doing what I'm doing with just transferring lecker from one pot to the other. I am going to be a little bit picky now though and take out the dirty lecker that I can see so that it's not like the new roots are going to hit the shards straight away. Okay. Honestly, this better be it. I guess the orchid is saying exactly the same thing. Are you done now? And I'm going to say, yes, I am done. Now you can grow, you can stay. No more interference from me, except lots of lovings, lots of water, lots of good fertilizer. It's up to you now. New growths and all that business. That would be awesome if you would be so kind as to forgive me. Where is that tag? I need to make a new sticker for it. So note to self, sticker for the Thompsoniana. Am I really, really happy and comfortable now? Really? Like for real, for real? <laughs> and look, I've got me some lecker back, which is awesome. That works. Okay, now one more thing left to do. And then still one more thing left to do is fill the reservoir with water. Now, because the roots are so shallow, I'm going in with the entire jug of water. There's nothing here touching the base and the wicking will help me. You can see that the water levels, you see how that is coming out of the pot? And the water levels are low enough that they will not get any roots soggy. So I can be really generous in filling up that reservoir. Oh, it's done. Except for the cleanup. More cleanup now. <laughs> mm. And now, because the sun is hitting the side of the hedge where the tolumnias are, I am bringing them into the shade with my Prostechia garciana alba because they have a long season of good light ahead of them and they don't need to have that extra stress of the sun beating on them just yet. Meanwhile, during the summer, they are in super bright shade, but that is for another orchid chores diary. Probably tomorrow. <laughs> we shall see how it goes with the schedule. So this is where they hang out overnight on this table. And then before I go to bed, this tray goes back to the staging area because in the morning, this is full sunshine already. So just for tonight, they've already been watered two times now in these past days as it's warming up. Lots and lots of wind 
and I keep watering them because they need to get some of their strength back and grow me some nice new growths. So here they can still dry out a little bit, but around about midnight, <laughs> I put the east side curtain down and these go back to the staging area. I'm waiting for this one to bloom, check it out. Don't know if that's obvious, good to see. I am hoping that this is red sunset. Not sure, fingers crossed that we've got this one identified very, very soon. Well, I can tell you, I certainly felt all of that today, but quoting the wise Confucius, find a job that you love and you will never work a day in your life. So I don't feel anything but great satisfaction and ta-da! The Blooming Alley is officially open and we shall do a bloom tour at some point but this is wonderful and you can see a sneak peek of my fires tongue and villa off to the right there totally completely and free i have some beautiful beautiful blooms and right in the top right hand corner of the screen is dendrobium tortile in full bloom so cartwheels around the patio. We won't be doing them in the blooming alley. Space is limited here now, but it is officially open and I am so happy. It's been a busy day. We got a lot done. I appreciate your company. Thank you so much for joining me. On days like these, knowing that you are here with me, it keeps me focused and just to keep going, keep going. Thank you so much for your support in doing that. And thank you for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, as per usual, though, stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.